Hey, what up, y'all? Big Daddy here, do Southern Grill. So, it's late. I'm sitting here sipping on a little something, something. Got another video for y'all. Today, I chefed up some grilled mango jerk chicken, coconut rice, cabbage, and wheat yeast rolls. Watch that video. Be easy. Subscribe. What up, y'all? Big Daddy here at Duke Southern Grill. I hope y'all Sunday started out good. Mine started out awesome, as every day is awesome. You know, every time you got that, that gift of life, that's awesome. Got a chance to, to take another breath and do something good with your day. So, with that being said, today we're getting into another meal. So, welcome y'all to my kitchen. Today, we're having jerk, no, sorry about that, mango jerk chicken. I'm gonna put this baby out on the grill. With that, we're having some cabbage, along with some coconut rice. And uh, um, you know, I'm actually throwing some wheat yeast rolls. So I hope y'all got a good appetite going. I hope y'all got y'all pen and paper in hand. Yeah, right, who uses a pen and paper anymore? Hope y'all taking these notes and actually cooking along with me. So to get started, first thing first is the bird. Now, we have this bird right here, right? It's a whole chicken, and what we did, well, what I did with it was, it's called uh, spatching the cock. Now, let's get into a little bit why it's called that. So, that's a shortened um, way of saying to dispatch the cock. Now, why are they saying we're dispatching this? Because I guess back when they came up with this term, they gonna kill that bird, split it down like that, get it ready for the grill, so they send them this on this merry way, right? So, but why do they call it a cock? Why do they call, you know, roosters or, or birds, chickens cock? So, the Puritans actually came up with the with, with the phrase. And it's actually supposed to, um, it actually refers to uh, a young hen, younger than about a year old or so. So, spatchcocking, I don't know if it fits because nowadays, I don't believe this is a young hen. So, but that's what they call it. So that's what we're doing. And so to just explain that briefly, you're gonna wanna cut along the backbone. Then once you have it open, remove the backbone. I don't, I didn't remove my, the, the backbone on this. I actually like the back, you know, so I didn't remove mine to, to do it the proper way. Um, or the trained way, you remove the backbone, you lay it down, and then you want to make sure you press firmly down in the center uh, around the wing area so that you snap that breastbone. The easier way is just take your kitchen chairs, cut right where that, the, the breast kind of like makes a V formation. That way when you open it up, boom, it's ready to go. It makes for an easier, more thorough way of cooking this chicken on the ground. So, mango jerk chicken. In this spot here, I have um, about two, two small to medium sized mangoes that you know, I removed the flesh from, put in the food processor. It yielded me about a cup of mangoes. So that cup of mango, along with a quarter cup uh, of vinegar, one tablespoon of the, the homemade jerk, and I'm gonna actually attach that recipe uh, to the comments, and a couple of tablespoons of butter, Put that in a pot, bring it to boil, then turn it down, and let that sit. All right, I'm going to let this finish up, and I'll be back in a minute to show you the next step. Be easy. All right, you can use about a tablespoon of this homemade jerk. And we're going to season up our bird. This is a five pound bird that I'm working with right here. And the, the jerk season, mm, mm, the jerk season actually has some salt in it. So 
this is kind of a one season situation right here. Wait till y'all get this recipe with this jerk. Y'all in y'all kitchen hooking this up. I'm trying to tell you, anybody sleeping, gonna wake up. They smell all these herbs and everything coming together. Like, whoa, what's that? What dad got going on in the kitchen? What mom got going on in the kitchen? That's what's up. You just want to make sure everything's nice and even. Now, what you would want to do is put this in your fridge a couple of hours overnight. Let that sit in. I ain't doing that. So, I'll be back. I'm about to sit this aside for a little bit, at least an hour or so. And then um, I'll be back with the next set. Be easy. So, yeah, I'll consider that maybe a, a medium head. Medium head of cabbage on the smaller side. Of course, cut the end off. And then, then get the slice in this. Now, I'm slicing this a little thin. That's just the way I, I prefer to do it. the cabbage, I'm going to make sure you take those hard parts off, but along with the cabbage, I'm going to slice up a medium onion, and I'm going to grate a carrot in there as well. No hard parts. <laughs> Not unless y'all want to be crunching on that in y'all y'all cabbage. So I'm gonna finish this up, but before I close this, um, cause I'm not gonna come back to the cabbage to actually have it in the pot. The one medium head, I'm slicing it thin. Slice it how you would like to. You can slice it um, no more than a, 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 a thumb's um, thickness, but um. Have the onion sliced up thin, carrot, those, the, the sweetness of the carrots. And the cabbage has a little bit of sweetness. Um, it's gonna really pair well with the jerk. So we'll talk more about that, but let me finish this up. Y'all, I'll be back, y'all be easy. All right, y'all, there's the cabbage mix. Got the onions. I only use one carrot. I can use as much as you want. Also, cabbage, let it be versatile. Yeah, I got a minute. Okay, I want my oil to burn. Let it be versatile. Peppers up in there, whatever you want up in there, I'll just leave it plain if that's you. So, in the pot, I have about three, three tablespoons of soil oil. Um, some people use the bacon, you know, they'll put a couple of strips of bacon up in there to make, and use the wheat from that. I have a different method, so I'm not I'm not using bacon in mine, but you can use bacon. Um, this is not steamed cabbage per se; it's fried cabbage. So when I do make that video, I'll explain the differences. We just want to get this up in here and let it cook now. I wouldn't season this cabbage until. Uh, it cooks down. Pot's getting a little full. Got a couple of cups left. So I'm going to let this cook down for a second. But I wouldn't season this cabbage until it cooks down. Then once it cooks down, um, salt and pepper to taste. And for, for the one head uh, that you see me cut up earlier, I would use about two teaspoons of soil sugar. Salt and pepper to taste, a couple of teaspoons of sugar. Of course, you know, this is more than one head, you know, but that's how I'm doing it here. 
Follow those measurements. Got the salt and pepper to taste. Two teaspoons of sugar. One head, medium head of cabbage. Slice thin or thick, whatever you want. Then uh, your onion, your carrot. Or omit the onion and carrot, it's up to you. Over in this pot over here, I have my water boiling for the coconut rice. That's two cups of water, two cups of chicken broth. Once that comes to boil, I'm gonna add in one cup of coconut milk. Do it like that, because if you don't, and you add the coconut milk all together, sometimes it could slide over and make a big mess. So, once I do that, you're gonna, well, once you do that to the, um, the rice, you're gonna add um, salt and pepper to taste, and one teaspoon at a time. Taste the, 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 the water and broth mixture to see if you like the seasons before you add your rice. Okay, just, that's just my little chef's note. Once you um, get the water and everything boiling though, then you wanna add two and a half cups of rice, cover, turn it down to the low, and let simmer for 30 minutes. That's the, that's just quick, simple coconut rice. All right, once I, I show y'all what that looks like, I, I go over the ingredients and step process again because, you know, it can be overwhelming with jumping from the meat to the cabbage to the rice. Um, don't put your hands in a hot pot at home. <laughs> All right, so I have this on like medium high. In about a minute or two, once this cooks down just a, a little bit more, I'm gonna start stirring it up. Then once it, it drops about half its way down, I'm gonna cover it, turn it down to low, and just let it simmer. And that's gonna take anywhere between 25 and 35 minutes, depending on how large you cut the pieces of cabbage. Like I said, halfway through the process is when you wanna add in your salt and pepper and your sugar. All right, y'all be easy. Okay, so just a recap. This is the coconut rice. Um, the board is boiling, so about to add the rice. But before I do, two cups of broth, two cups of water. Once that comes to boil, add in your coconut milk, um, about a teaspoon or so a time, salt and pepper to taste. And like I said, um, just a, a little tip, before you add your rice, you know, always taste your water. That way if you need to add a little bit more something, you can. And the most important, if it's a little too on the salty side or whatever, you can actually reduce this and, um, you know, adjust it how you need to. So, since I have five cups of liquid, I have two and a half cups of rice. I'm just going to gently just stir it out a bit. But sometimes the starch in the rice, when you add it to the water, it can stick. You don't, you don't want that. So just... Stir that, let that come back to a boil, and then turn it down on low, cover, let simmer, 30 minutes. Be easy. Hey, what up, y'all? Time for the chicken again. She's been just drinking up all of those juices and the spices and the herbs, and she, she, she ready. She ready to go lay down and take a nice grill nap, and that's what we're about to do. But I just wanted to let you guys know something. Um, as I stated, this is mango jerk chicken, right? Real mango jerk chicken. However, right now there is no mango about this chicken at all. Um, you could have marinated with a little bit of mango and some other things. You could have had um, your mango juice, uh, part of your brine. However, the main focus of this dish is the jerk. So you don't want to take away from the jerk by having too much mango. So my, 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 my theory is this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the grill. It's going to take about an hour on like a medium heat, all right? Um, it's about 325 or 350 or so. Partway through the cooking, all right, about a third of the way in, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to base it down with that mango jerk sauce, all right? Not on the bottom, 
just on the top, go up under the skin, and then afterwards, when we're about 10 minutes left of cooking, we're gonna go out there again, baste it down. This time, I'm gonna flip it, get the other side. Here's the reason. All the way into the bone, you're gonna have that spicy, flavorful jerk. I mean, it's gonna be a chain popping, all of those different herbs and spices dancing on your tongue. But the top and a little bit into the meat, you're gonna have that, 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 that mango, that sweetness, you know, the citrus behind it and everything. And that's how it should be. It's because it's mango chicken, the whole thing shouldn't taste like, you know, you just dump the mango on the chicken and bit them both at the same time. Should be a little bit better than that. But if that's what you choose to do, marinate it, brine it, or those who like to use the injectors, inject it, whatever. This is just Big Daddy's way. I was showing you my way. I hope you do it in at least one time and see if you like it. All right, so grill, medium heat, about 325 to 350, one hour. Third way in, so what is that? About 20 some minutes in, you're gonna go in. Get that nice and sauced up, right? 10 minutes left to cook in, sauce it up again. I'll see y'all when this is done and we'll see what it look like. Y'all be easy. All right, y'all, we at the end. Another day, another video, another meal, another good meal. Never forget that. No matter if you're at home and you attempt to try to cook something and it don't really come out the way that you plan, it's still a good meal. It is good because it's good intentions. Your intent was to make something outstanding and you just have to tweak it. You learn from your mistakes, you grow, you get better, right? It's never a bad, never a bad time in the kitchen unless you got people in your kitchen, in your space that's trying to, you know, bring your mood down. And that, you know what you do? Get the heck out of my kitchen. You know what I'm saying? People like that can't be in Big Daddy's kitchen. So, we did the mango jerk chicken, grilled mango jerk chicken. Hope it looked good to y'all. We did some cabbage, coconut rice, as well as my wheat yeast rolls. Yo, for dessert, carrot cake. I know it wasn't part of the video. However, I'm putting that link in the comment section because I did make that today as well as shoot that video. I just separated them. Yo, honestly, this is what's up. I'm ready to eat. This smells amazing. Uh, if you're making it, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, y'all just like, yo, this is this, this smells so good. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you enjoyed it if you did make it. If not, maybe another day. Yo, y'all be safe, be easy.